This is Norman Geary, news correspondent. Thank you for listening to the Nightly News Podcast, the voice of the Knights. Welcome back to the Nightly News. We're here with online math professor here at Central Penn College, Cheryl Baker. Cheryl, thank you so very much for coming today. And we're going to talk the, for the second segment here with Cheryl a little bit more about some of the online aspects of math. So let's just start off with this. I understand that there is a fear of math out there, and I get it a lot. I have many advisees. I talk to many first-term students, and when I talk to my advisees, typically math is always pushed back and yes. pushed back. And I've actually had a few students who had to stay an extra term because they were thinking to themselves, oh, I have two math classes to take. I can take them at the same time. Unfortunately, you have prerequisites for your math classes to move yes. to the different levels. Yes. C- can you tell me a little bit more about why students fear math so much? There actually is a, a term that we use, math phobia, and it, which causes great math anxiety. Anxiety, you, anxiety is actually a learned, a learned condition. You are not born with anxiety, but there you have. There is math anxiety and number anxiety and test anxiety. I have not met almost any student that has hasn't had some type of fear of math. If I've talked to 20 students, 19 of them will tell me I hate math. I don't like to do it. I won't. I won't do it. And when I talk to them, and I tell them math is fun. You have to play it like a game. The problem is that math is cumulative. So when you start with the basic operations, you're going to build on those. So if your foundation is weak in the beginning, your your house is not going to stand. You're not going to be able to do the applications and concepts that you need to do in the future. And I think students think, okay, I can learn how to multiply, I can learn how to divide, and then I'm going to be okay with uh, logarithms. (laughs) <laughs> because I know how to do that. It's not. It's a building process, step by step. And if one of the steps is weak, you have to go back. And I think with other courses sometimes, you can learn U.S. history. You can learn about the Civil War, and then that has nothing to do with the World War II. Um, so that's the whole difference between math courses and other courses. Math is like a sport. You have to train. You have to build your skills. You have to keep continuing to build your skills or you'll lose them. You know, it's interesting that you say that because one of the classes I've taught the most here at the school is oral communications. And I try to tell the students toward the end of the class, after we've gone through everything, after they've given their final speeches, I always on the last day try to give them a little bit of motivational help. One of the things I say is exactly what you just said. Guys, you have to understand that we've been building our our abilities in public speaking this term, but if you just stop here, you're never going to be able to take it to the next level to where you're a proficient public speaker. You have to use this, you have to remember everything that we talk about, and you have to apply it when you're doing presentations in other classes. And so I think that that, there are some classes I I believe that, that absolutely are essential to build over the years, and I think certainly math's one of those too. Now, another question that I have is, you know, one of the things, again, that we talked about in the first segment is that there's just this stigma across the country that online classes are so much easier than the average class. Do you find some students take the online sections of your class because they're intimidated to be in the classroom and think it might be easier to take online? I'm not sure if they're intimidated to take it on in the classroom. I think what they think is... I can't make it to class. I I have too busy a life. I'm going to take this online class where I can work at my own pace and get everything done whenever I want to. And they don't realize that we have restrictions and, and dates and they must fulfill certain obligations at certain times. I'm not sure they grasp that concept uh, with an online class. Online classes, I think I discussed that with you earlier, I think are somewhat harder because you have to be self-motivated. You have to be self-disciplined. I've had students tell me, I have such a busy life. Well, everybody has a busy life. And what they don't realize is, this is your goal to get this class done. So you have to make time slots to get that done. And that's the hard part of a virtual class. So uh, I had some feedback from one of our students that had taken an online section of math and just wanted to give us some feedback 
on how and why she did, did very well in the class. First and foremost, the thing that she said is, this is a quote, no way is there a way to survive without a textbook. Can you give us a little very ins- important? Uh, can you give us a little insight on how often do you find that students don't have the textbooks, and and can you give us just maybe an uh, idea of what their success rate was? I often, and almost always, there's at least one or two students that don't have the textbook when the class starts. They will eventually get it, but at that point, if it's two weeks in, three weeks in, they've already missed a lot of the basics, and there's not. There's not time in an online class for me to go back over those. And besides that, there's time limits. At Central Penn, at Central Penn, we have books on reserve in the library. I suggest that to them. And sometimes students aren't motivated enough to just go out there and get what they need. It's vital. You have to have the book from day one. And it's my understanding that they can rent books online now. Which there's, is something... so many, there's so many ways to get books. Yeah. I mean, certainly through our portal, but there's hundreds of used book sites and things like that and it, uh, you know all, all they really have to do is even in the uh, break if they and really they could just go to the bookstore and see what the ISBN is but you can always contact your professor and we can give them the ISBN so absolutely. they can make sure that they have the book in time absolutely Amazon also does something interesting if you're a student they do free expedited shipping as yes. well on textbooks yes they do so I mean there's not that I'm you know putting them over well, our own textbook providers but just you know obviously there are ways to have your textbook and to, to me after being here for, I've been here for four years now, I think anybody who doesn't have the book day one, I think it's just a cop-out. I think it's just laziness on their own part. I do too, and I don't think they realize that because it's an online class, that book is one of their biggest resources. They have to refer to that book often. They have to actually read the book, and they can't just go in and do the math problems. It's vital for the assignments as well, but there is a lot of information on concepts and applications that they, they could get online, but to be assignment specific, they must have the textbook. So one of the things that the student also said was that um, in some of the coursework, they had some different ways to present material. Now I know talking to you, you said that you'd done a video each week. When you did your videos, what were some of the things that you were doing in your videos each week in general? Okay, my goal for this term was to put a video in each week. And since I've taught math, college algebra 105, several terms now, in their assignments, I know where the problem areas are. So I tried to focus on those problem areas. And I think I mentioned to you that I am very strict about graphing, and I wasn't getting the results that I wanted. So my very first video, along with the the rules of what I call graph etiquette, I had that in every online class, but it was a written announcement. Now, in the first video, I actually graphed and said, I want you to have graph paper. I want you to draw lines with rulers. And exactly what I wanted in that video, and not only that, but I enticed them with the video by having some secret clue that they had to tell me that they got a bonus point for. And it was absolutely amazing. Their first assignment, I would say 95% of them had beautiful, excellent graphs, exactly what I wanted and exactly what I was looking for. And the feedback that I gave them was excellent. I, I was just amazed. It's amazing that students, when they see me, they see my face and they see what I'm looking for, they'll do it. One of the things that she said, she had uh, Professor Megan Ream, who's also the math tutor, she said that a lot of the things Megan was doing was using a, a whiteboard to explain a specific problem, but also to use different colored markers in the whiteboard display. Um, the student here said that she really appreciated because she's a visual learner. Um, but that to me is one of the challenges in teaching online. So I, I've always talked about how, you know, I, I was teaching online classes and and friends and colleagues of mine would be, oh, well, that must be easy. And I said, actually, it's the exact opposite. So it's funny because, you know, in the same way the students, it's a little, I I would think it's a little bit more difficult online. For us as instructors, 
it's absolutely much more difficult, much more time consuming to put together an excellent class. So I think that that's something else that the students don't necessarily realize because they don't see us in class each day for that hour. They don't see really how much behind the scenes work goes into creating some of these classes too. So that I think uh, is something important to note. Now, um, can you talk about some of the other ways that your lessons are presented? Obviously, you said videos, but what are some of the other ways you introduce the material to students? Every week starts out with an announcement telling them what's expected, and then they go to the coursework tab in Blackboard, and it starts out with a discussion, and we're going to talk about a topic for that week. Then the there's an overview that tells them exactly what's expected when their assignments are due, and exactly the order. And I actually, this for the past two terms, I've tried to entice them by making the homework due before they, the quiz appears. So the quiz has an adaptive release. Sure. And my goal was to get the students to do the homework so that I could grade it and give them feedback and then for them to take the quiz. It is working. It's not working exactly as I want it to work because they can submit the homework and then the quiz opens automatically and, and what happens is the students wait till the last day or the very last, next to the last day to hand in the homework so I don't have time to grade it before their quiz. So I'm working on more incentives like that. But they'll have an overview that tells them everything they need to do. Then when they go into the week itself, there are topics and resources for each concept in the overview. And then they go to a um, module that is for the assignments, and they'll see the discussion, the homework, and the weekly quiz. Um, there's time limits, so there's reminders. I'm constantly emailing, constantly sending re-announcements. And Blackboard also reminds them of deadlines. Now, um, in, in my last question here to you, Cheryl, and first of all, Cheryl Baker, thank you so much for coming today. You're welcome. Um, one of the things that I really wanted to get across to the students is that we, even if you are an online student, we have tremendous support here. Now, obviously, you seem like you are very on top of things, making sure to put yourself out there if students need any assistance. But... Do you have some maybe uh, interesting websites or um, certainly we have our math tutor, Megan Ream, here on yes. campus. Uh, I will put in with the uh, article that comes along all her contact information. But what are some of the things that students can do if they just don't have a chance to touch base with you or touch base with Megan? What are some of the things they can do on their own to try to bolster up some of this confidence in math? I think little successes lead to big successes. And I'm very familiar with Megan Rain. Megan and I uh, um, talk all the time, and she's a wonderful resource. But students today have everything at their ha fingertips. All they have to do is Google. And there is one particular website that is Khan Academy. He is a genius. And you put in Khan Academy and any topic whatsoever whether it be long division, multiplication, uh, rational polynomials, and he will have a video audio lesson. He will teach to every type of learner, that, and you mentioned that type of learner. It's vital that we, we teach to the visual, the audio, the kinesthetic. We need to have different resources that teach to the different learning styles. And I would suggest to students that if they don't know their learning style, they should f find that out. And that's something that I actually do in freshman seminar and college yes. success as well, is we do a VARC test and we get an idea of the student. But I always try to explain to the students that when you find out what your VARC is, that's the best way to study and certainly look for ways yes. inside of courses to, if you are a visual learner, to find that, but that you still have to be ready to adapt because... You know, Absolutely. Un unfortunately, we are unable to, at this point, do something for every individual learning style. It, it's just far too difficult. We try to do as much as we can yes. to, like, whether it just be a na narrated PowerPoint with lots of pictures and, and visuals and graphs and charts. Um, so we try to do as much as we can with that, but the students still do have to be able to adapt to the way that the professor's offering the material. And then, like you said, go out online and find other resources yes. that are a little bit more in line with your learning style. 
I totally agree. Cheryl, uh, thank you so much for doing this today, and I really hope that this is helpful to some of your uh, online math students, and I hope that this is just a little way to sort of break the ice with them. And just to tell them, you know, this may be a challenge, but it's not going to be so difficult if you really just put the time in. If you had one piece of advice that you could give to any of your maybe potentially students who are just entering into your class the first time they've taken a math class online, what would that advice be? I think my biggest piece of advice would be to read everything and follow directions. I mean, and you can't do much better than that. And certainly you'd already mentioned earlier making sure you have some type of study schedule, making sure you're budgeting enough time to do your, your uh, get through the material each and every week, but certainly reading and asking questions. That's what we want to hear. I have one last comment. Sure. Please don't hesitate to get in touch with your instructor, your professor. That's what we're here for. We're here to help you. And that's what we want to do. Don't be afraid. Don't be intimidated. Contact us. Email us. Join our virtual office. We will help you. And that's, like I said, like Cheryl said, that's part of why we are here. We want to make sure that you guys are getting through these courses uh, in, in a proficient way. Well, Cheryl, thank you so much for spending time here with the Nightly News today. And we really hope that uh, this podcast is able to certainly help some of our new students who might be taking online math classes. Thank you. It was no, nice meeting you. No problem. 